Welcome, Dobrodošli, to Wrong Stereotypes and Assumptions About Serbs in Serbia, part two. <laughs> part two. I thought I would do a follow-up to this video. I'll link to the first one in the description below if you haven't seen it. Um, but I thought I would do a follow-up to the video because I've been learning about lots of new stereotypes apparently because I've been watching a lot of videos from people who just traveled to Serbia during pandemic 2020 because Serbia was one of the countries in Europe, there weren't many, that was allowing people to enter the country without a PCR test. Also, Serbia was one of the few countries in Europe that was accepting American travelers, while the rest of Europe was like, stay the F away from us, you dirty Americans. So yeah, a lot of people came to Serbia in the past six months, including a lot of travel vloggers who made a lots of videos, and I think some new stereotypes rose to the surface that I wasn't aware of before. There's gonna be four stereotypes in this video. Um, there was another one that I was thinking of that one of you guys mentioned in the comments of my first video and I was looking in the comments and I couldn't remember what it was and I couldn't find the comment and I was like, Argh! that was such a good stereotype. <laughs> so feel free to comment below any stereotypes that I've missed because I learned a lot from the comments that you guys left on the first video. So wrong stereotype number one is that Serbia apparently is this old-fashioned antiquated place or something I don't know I don't even know the best way to put this but the reason I'm saying this is because I've seen so many videos and video titles that said shocking Serbia shocked by Belgrade not what I expected and I'm like what the fuck were you expecting like were you expecting to like rock up to Serbia and it would just be like this big village or like all of these like rundown buildings or something like what what were these people expecting it's as if people watched the movie Eurotrip and how those backpackers entered Eastern Europe and it was this big slum. Dear sweet mother of God, we're in Eastern Europe. I, th I think when people think of Eastern Europe sometimes, and I think probably Central Asia gets this too, and like Middle East and stuff, people just kind of assume they're gonna be like a shithole. Like I hate even saying that term, but that's the only thing I can think of as to why, why people would be shocked. Stereotype number two is that apparently some people think that Serbian women are all like plastic dolls with fake boobs and fake lips. So I'm not gonna spend too long on this because I talked about it in the other video, reacting to Croatia versus Serbia by the YouTuber Gus on the go. But again, just like any other country, the women in like a higher society, very rich women who like married well and stuff, you will see women in those circles who have the big boobs and like the fake lips. And it's the same in every country. It's the same in the UK, it's the same in the US, it's the same in Canada, it's the same in Lebanon. Also, the thing he said about Serbia kind of being joked about as Silicon Valley, I wanted to clarify this. There's a specific street in Belgrade, which is called uh, Strahinica Bana. So this is a street in particular that has been nicknamed Silicon Valley. It was nicknamed Silicon Valley because so many people would show up with their like really nice cars, really expensive outfits, and yeah, rich men and successful men would show up with like their rich wives and stuff. And some of them did have boob jobs and got their lips done and things like that. By the way, I love the street. It is so amazing when the weather's warm and all of the bars and the restaurants and the lounges are open and they have all of this outdoor seating. It's just such a beautiful street. Wrong assumption, stereotype number three. <laughs> I can't count. That is that what hooligans do at football games represents the behaviors and the thoughts and the feelings <laughs> of the general population. I was thinking the other day, like why are people so intimidated by Serbia and other Eastern European countries? And I think this is one of the reasons I think the way Western media often covers um, unfortunate football games where there are some hooligans who maybe did some racist chants. I feel like Western media always covers it as like, 
whatever team subjected to racist chants by Red Star fans or Partizan fans or like Bulgarian fans. Western media will cover these hooligan incidences as the fans of the team or the fans or that country's fans and it's the hooligans. I really do think that this contributes to people thinking like, oh, people there must be racist, Eastern Europeans are scary, Serbs are scary. And hooligans are people who fell on the wrong tracks in life. They're not really making it in life through, you know, honorable means. So they are essentially people who fall into like a gang type of situation. So they don't represent the thoughts or feelings or behaviors of the country. The last uh, wrong assumption, apparently, you would think that watching some of these videos that all people eat here for breakfast, lunch, and dinner is chevapi and burek. <laughs> it's just funny to me. I mean, obviously when you come here, of course you're gonna try chevapi and of course you're gonna try burek and it's fun to do. It's like a staple of the Balkans. Um, but I just think it's funny how, I don't know, it just seems like people kind of have this perception that people eat that like all the time, every single day. I can't remember the last time I hung out with someone, one of my Serbian friends, and saw them eating burek or chevapi. Is it chevapi or chevapici? I never want, I never know when to say which one. Anyway, I've come to the conclusion that there's really three um, situations where people will actually eat burek or chevapi. So one is when you go out to a bar or a club, you're really drunk, it's late, it's like 2 a.m., it's 3 a.m., you're super hungry, you and your friends, and the only place that's open that has food is like the Pekara, which is um, a bakery, or the Roštil corner shop that, you know, is making the burek or chevapi and Pliaskevita. And so you go there because like your options are limited. But the second reason that you will eat um, burek or chevapi is let's say you're running out of money, you're waiting to get paid, you don't have that much money left to go out to eat or spend money on lots of groceries. So you're like, I'm just gonna go to the Pekara and get <laughs> burek for lunch today. And then the third reason is if maybe you just don't fucking feel like cooking. It's just easy, it's cheap, and you just don't feel like cooking. So that's it guys. If you have any stereotypes or wrong assumptions that I missed, let me know in the comments because I think making these videos is fun. Oh, also please like this video. It helps my videos get promoted more and suggested more on the homepage, on the sidebar of YouTube. Um, so it really helps me just clicking that button. So I greatly, greatly appreciate it.